one comes to the Father except through me, right? So this is what we need to know. This is what we got to look at. We're going to look at everything in this, in, in this verse. We're going to look at the very first two words, I am, which is one word, bro. I am, right? I am. Ana even, Ana even Urcha, Ana even Shoraro, Ana even Chaya, which Kaleat and what Babi illa be. And that's what you read on top of that. Mariam Chay. Mariam. God bless you, Chay. So, we need to know why did Jesus say, I am? Why did he say, I am? What, what did he mean when he said, I am? What is I am? Modiramanai Anil. What does I am mean? Anybody knows? You said it was Jesus. I am. Alpha and Omega. I am. The Alpha, the Omega. The Alpha, the Omega. I am is what? I am. You can use for all the times. It means it's always. I am is not something only used in the past, or in the present, or in the future. It's for all the time. I am. I am is used for all the time. It means he was always and he always will be when he says I am. It means there is nothing before and there is nothing after him. It's always him. I am. And that's why God said I am. And Jesus said he came and said the same thing. I am. And that is when you understand and you have the relationship with Jesus Christ as a man, not as God, as a man. You need to have that relationship with Jesus Christ as a man. Garik have you look your sura, have you look your sura, but Mshika Ishum Shika Barnash. Lah Allah Barnasha, Allah who takes you like a Kahagi Bahadi. Your sura, dear Gagavi, many for supai. Your your relationship with Jesus has to be personal. I have it my way, you're going to have it your way, okay? Just like the way you look at your children, okay? The father looks at their children, he has different relationship with each child the way his children are, okay? Different relationship. One jokes one way, one says one way, so each one is attached to the father differently. We all attach to Jesus Christ, but in different ways. My attachment to Jesus Christ is different than your attachment to Jesus Christ. How are you attached to Jesus Christ? What is your relationship with Jesus Christ? You should know that. But Jesus Christ, the man, not the God, the man. If you want to know his divine, you have to know him as a man first. Why? Because he said, no one comes to the Father unless he knows me. First, you got to get to know me as a man. Then I will introduce you to my Father as my divine. See? So you have to have relationship with him first, as a man. Otherwise, you will never understand his divine. Why until now Christians are, are confused about the divine of Jesus Christ? Because they don't have that personal relationship with him. He will clarify that for you. You will understand it more once you have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Why is all this division? about Jesus divine and about who Jesus is and why this believe in that? Because man until now, it's hard for him to understand Jesus Christ divine because he doesn't have that relationship with him and personal matter as him being a man. You have to know him as a man. You have to take him as a man, just like the apostles did. They had to live with him three and a half years as a man. As a man, you have to eat with him, you have to drink with him, you have to sleep with him, you have to wake up with him, you have to talk to him, you have to drive with him, you have to go to work with him, you have to do everything with him. You have to sit and drink your coffee with him every morning. And sing with him. Sing with him. If you don't have that relationship with Jesus Christ, it's going to be very hard for you to understand Christianity. You need to have that. See? And that's what's missing in Christians. That's why they try to bring God into the way they think and they make God so small and then he is pleasing to them but he is all anger and he's all hate and he's all judgmental. He's not. God doesn't look at things the way man does. 
If God does that, then God is limited. And that's not my God. That's not my Jesus Christ. My Jesus Christ is not limited. My Jesus Christ is the most forgiving man there is. And the most forgiving God there is. So what is all this about? See? All what we need to know is the great I am. The great I am. Mani Lawa the great I am. Who is this the great I am? Mani Lawa. Why? Why is he saying I am? Why is that saying I am God and get it done with? See? Because he wants you to know him as man, as a man. See? And his divine will be revealed to you. The only way his divine. It's like you get to know a person, a good friend. Once you go to their house, you're shy. You don't want to move from that chair. You just met the family. You don't want to even walk a step from that chair. You just want to, you, you, you're hardly talking. You're not loud. You're not, you know, you're just uh, trying to say your name or their name. You want to introduce yourself. You want to get to know these people. But once you get to know these people, once you, you come in and you go out, you come in and you go out, I am knocking on the door. Whoever opens the door for me, whoever hears my voice, Jesus said. He didn't just say, open the door. Whoever hears my voice. He didn't say, hear the knock. He said, hears my voice. That's man talking. Man talking. Whoever hears my voice and opens the door. I will come in. I will dine with him. And he will dine with me. What? We're going to become a family. So if we don't become a family, how do we get to know this sweet Jesus man? How? Ooh, he's scary. No, he's loving. He is the most loving ever. If you get to meet Jesus Christ, honestly, and if you get to see him, you will look at this world differently. And that is why you need to know him as a man. You see? That's why Jesus didn't come 30 years from heaven and he was 30 years old. No, he came as a baby for people to know him as a man. For people to get to know him completely, that he's a perfect man. Imagine you get to know in your life a perfect man. A perfect man, which is impossible, only through Jesus Christ. A perfect man you get to know, to bring him to your house. So, mani le awwa. Why is he I am? Why is he saying I am? See? And we'll get to know that. Let's go and look deep in that. Okay. I am. John 10.10. 10. What did Jesus say? Somebody read that for me, please. Muthanna, read that for me from, the, from right there. From right there. The thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. What does the thief do? And that's the thief we talked about since then. What does he want to do? This is the bad scene. He wants to steal, then kill, then destroy. They're in order. They're in order. What does he want to do first? Listen to that. He wants to steal first. Wow. What is he stealing? Souls. He's stealing souls. How does he steal souls? Anybody? Huh? Deceiving. Deception. And how does he steal them? So for steal, Jesus said, I am the way. He steals you out of the way. He takes you out of the way. Deception. He takes you out of the way. For steal, Jesus said, I am the way. Satan said, I steal. Jesus said, I am the truth. What does Satan wants to do? No. Kill the truth in you. He wants to kill the truth in you. His goal is to kill the truth in you. See? Jesus is the way. He wants to steal you out of the way. Steal you out. Steal. It means what? It means confuse you. Take you out of the way. And then he wants to kill that truth in you because Jesus said, I am the truth. And then, 
destroy. Jesus said, I am the life. Well, he wants to destroy your life. You're not going to have everlasting life. Destroy, it means gone. That is the mission. The enemy wants to do that. But Jesus wants to show. You see, this is the thing. Jesus didn't say, I'm going to show you the way. I'm going to let you know the truth. And I'm going to lead you to life. No, no. He said, I am the way. You see, if you say, I'm going to go to D1. I'm going to say, you know what? Take this street and go from golf and then turn on this right and go left and go right and then you're going to make it there. Well, I tell you, take 94 and head this way and you're going to get there, right? But Jesus didn't say that. He didn't say, which way you're going to find the way. No, he said, I am the way. It means it's not for you to find the way, to know the way. Finding the way is one thing. But knowing, Maria, no. But knowing the way, knowing the way, which is Jesus Christ, knowing the way is another. Finding the way is one thing. Knowing the way, person, person, person. See, that's what we don't have. Person, it's a relationship. Knowing the way, not finding the way. You're not gonna find Jesus. You need to know Jesus. See? You don't look for Jesus. Jesus looks for you. But all what you have to do is to know him. How are you going to know him? Just open the door, he said. Just say, I am inviting you in my life. Come to me. I want to get to know you. Who you are. That's it. I want to know you. And you know what? Don't be on your knees and cry. No, no. Sit on a chair and say, Jesus, I know you're sitting here. Here, have a cup of coffee. We're sitting and we're talking. That's what you're supposed to do. You need to talk to him. He doesn't want you to pray. He wants you to talk. Praying means talking. Talking to God, right? But how are you going to talk to God if you don't see him? Because now man wants to see, right? So who he, go, he gave you? Jesus Christ. So he didn't say, I will show you the way. He said, I am the way. You need to know me. That's all. Know him, you know the way. Know him, you know the truth. Know him, you know the life. Very simple. It's a very simple statement. He didn't say, take 94 and you pull from here and then you're going to find me. No, no, no. He said, you need to what? Know me. That's it. And all what you have to do is a very simple thing. Open the door, invite me. And you will know me. And then you will know that I am the way. I'm not gonna teach you the way, you're gonna know me. That's it, then you know the way. Then you're gonna know the truth. When you know me, you will know the truth. See? Because otherwise, Satan is always trying to steal you from the way from Jesus. He's trying to kill the truth in you. That is the picture of Jesus Christ. He wants to kill it in you. And that's what's happening to a lot of people. And then he doesn't want you to have everlasting life. He wants to destroy your soul. That is what he wants. In Exodus 3.14, what did Moses say? Somebody read it. Melania, read that one. I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am he. No, I'm sorry. I am I am. I am. I am has sent me to you. I am. God said to Moses, Moses said, well, if I go to Egypt and tell my people, what name should I tell them? Which God sent you? He said, tell them I am. Really? Yeah, I am. I am who I am. What is I am who I am? Anna even Anna. Anna even Anna. I am. Who I am. But then he said, just tell him I am. I am sent you. Really? What, what kind of picture that give you about our God? Jesus is talking here to Moses. What is he saying to him? <clears throat> Listen. When a king used to send a letter or a message to another king, he would say, tell him 
King such, the son of such, the grandfather of such, the father of such, send me. That's man. God. I am. I am. God. Creator. It's good. That means Jesus wants to live in you. And that's what's going to happen. When you come out of here, you're going to meet him. Okay? That's how it works. That's how we meet him. We First we cry, then we open the door. That's called coming to the Lord. So, the great God, the creator, I am. Wow. How humble can this God be? That we make him a big thing and we are scared of him and we no guys please he's loving he is the best he is simple he is humble man drew a picture for God that has hate that has revenge that has all this why because that's what Satan wants that simple I am, instead of saying, I am the God, your creator. I am the one that can revenge from you. No, he said, just tell him, I am. I am sent you. I am. Why? Jesus will use the same thing that when he spoke to Moses, he said the same words. I am. I am. Exodus 6, 2. Somebody read, Khalid? God also said to Moses, I am the Lord. I am the Lord. God said what? I am the, the Lord. Lord. Who is the Lord? Who is the Lord? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So what is he saying? I am Jesus Christ. You seen Jesus, you seen me. <laughs> I am the Lord. When did he become the Lord? When he had a relationship with man. He was Yahweh. Right? No, he was Elohim. What was he? Elohim. He became Yahweh when? When he had a relationship with Adam. Right? With man. So once God had a relationship with man, he became Lord. Lord. First he was creator. God means creator, means Elohim. And then he became Lord when he had a relationship with Adam. Then he became Al Shaddai when he went to the war for man, when he went to fight for the Israelites. Exodus 22. Sarah? I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I am the Lord your God. You see? I am. Again, he used I am. Would Jesus use these, these words again? No. He's going to make it very simple for us. I am the bread of life. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the light of the world. Simple, right? Why? Because now... He is trying to introduce you to Jesus the man. Jesus the man. The one that you need the most in your life. You see? This is talking from heaven. But when Jesus came in man's flesh, then he made it very simple and easy. I am the light of the world. I am Deuteronomy 32, 39. Who wants to read it for me? Suad. See now that I myself am He. Myself am He. There is no God beside me. I put to death and I bring to the life. I have wounded and I will heal. And no one can deliver out of my hand. No one can be delivered out of my hand. So what is...